Welcome back to my YouTube channel everybody. I am doing a bit of sewing today. So as it is almost back to school time, and I say back to school time because it's 2020 and it's uh, it's it's like back to school, it's hanging on a thread. I do hope all the kids do actually get to go back to school um, because obviously they finished up way early um, this year. One of the things that I had noticed is people are looking for wipeable, cleanable items, especially for the smaller school kids. So, I'm gonna hook you up. I am making some reusable sandwich bags and that the inside is made from oil cloth and they're easy to clean and wipeable and it's also trying to ditch the cellophane as well. This is my sandwich bag because I bring a sandwich to work. I'm a good old ham and cheese and a packet of king kind of girl for my lunch. I will admit, I've been using the cellophane and I was like, no, I don't want to get into this habit. So I've made some reusable sandwich bags. Um, which are perfect for scale, but you can also make smaller size ones. So if you're also like me and you're partial to a few biscuits with your tea, um, you can make mini ones. And I think they're perfect for little kids. Like my niece, she'll bring a little snack with her, like to crash my nephew, and you can just fill them up with whatever you need, fold them over and you can wipe them and they're handy. I'm also gonna include the pencil case DIY that I made last year. Um, so I'm gonna get straight into the first one, which is the sandwich bags. So here's how I made reusable sandwich bags. For this project, you're gonna have one sheet of an oil cloth fabric and you're gonna have a plain cotton for the outside. I also recommend using little clips because when you use pins and oil cloth, it can actually leave holes. So if you can't get your hands on fancy sewing clips, I just use little binders. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sandwich the right sides of the fabric together and we're going to use our clamps to put them into place and we're going to do a straight stitch down both sides and don't forget to do a reverse stitch when you start and finish. I use a longer stitch length when I am working with oil cloth. It just find it leaves less kind of holes in the fabric. So lengthen your stitch and then two stitches down both sides and then we are going to turn it right way out. Once your fabric has been turned right way out, we are going to do a top stitch just to neaten up the hems because oil cloth, we, well, I don't recommend ironing it, your seam with this because it will melt. So give it a good press with your fingers and run it through the machine and do a top stitch to give a nice neat finish on both sides because this is what you're going to see when you open up your sandwich bag. So now we are gonna fold it up. So I am doing the, I'm doing it exactly how it's gonna be finished, but we're gonna do a French seam. So I'm just doing a fold. I'm gonna put the measurements to this project in the description box. This is really similar to an envelope cushion if anyone has made an envelope cushion. So we're going to do a stitch down both sides. Now also, my camera cut out when I was trimming the seams, but basically you can finish your project here because this is the right way out. But what I did was, I once I'd done my seams, I used my rotary cutter to tighten them and I turned my project inside out. So my project is inside out now and we're gonna do a French seam. I'm simply gonna stitch a straight stitch down both sides and I'm gonna turn it the right way out and that gives me a really nice neat French seam. You don't have to do a French seam, you can use a pinking shears if you wanna just cut the side seams, but I just wanted to get a really nice finish with this project. If you want to make a pencil case and you want to make it from oil cloth, you can follow this video that I made from last year, but all you have to do is just use oil cloth instead of the cotton that I used. And when you are using oil cloth, just lengthen your stitch. And I use my normal presser foot that's on my machine, my machine, but you can get a special pre presser foot 
So I shall press our foot. That makes it easier for the oil cloth to glide through. It's like a walking foot. It's like a, one that you would use for leather. Or if you don't have one of them fancy feet, you can put a little bit of masking tape um, just on underneath your presser foot and that kind of helps the fabric to walk over. But I was fine with my universal foot. You may just have to tug it a little bit gently at the back to push it through. Um, but otherwise, you should be fine to do the same method with oil cloth. In today's video, we are going to be making two pouches. This is the first one, which is going to be a boxy pencil case style. We have three pieces of fabric for this. We've got a front piece, a lining piece, and I have some iron on interfacing. I will also leave the measurements in the description box. The first thing I'm doing is ironing on some iron on interfacing. This basically stiffens the fabric. So when you're making pencil cases, pouches, makeup pouches, you want it to have some structure and hold its shape. Same if you're making handbags. You simply just iron this on and that is it. I'm then just adding my zipper. So I've got a 13 inch zipper for this project, but I'll leave all the details in the description box. You can also customize this to suit whatever size you want. I am placing the closed zipper facing up against the lining fabric. I'm then placing the patterned fabric face down and I'm pinning it in place. I have seen people use these really cool clamps. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my hand on these clamps. I'm gonna have to order them online, but you can use them instead of pins if it's easier. When sewing, you can use a zipper foot. You can pick up a zipper foot off Amazon really cheaply. When you're sewing straight down, when you get to the bottom and you can feel the zipper, with the needle still in the fabric, you can just simply pull up the zipper. If you try and sew straight down, you're gonna get a wiggly line. You will see people just doing this. They'll be pausing, they'll be pushing the zipper up, and then they will be sewing back down. I hope that makes sense, but it's just so you don't get a wobbly line when you're sewing. So once you are happy and you are all sewn, you are going to iron this flat. I like to use the iron and um, it just gives it a nice professional finish and it just makes it neater. Once I have it ironed and pressed flat, I'm gonna do a simple top stitch. This just stops the zipper kind of from bunching and the lining fabric from catching. So I always do a top stitch when I'm doing my zipper and it makes it look really professional as well. Once you have finished your top stitch, you are then going to work on the other side of the pouch. So you, your zipper is gonna be facing the other way now, and you're gonna put the right side facing the zipper, and then you'll see me flip the lining. Um, you're, I'm gonna have like a sandwich now. I hope you can follow this. Um, when you're actually doing it in person, um, it makes sense. You are then gonna take it to the machine and carefully sew straight down. Make sure to choose loads of pins if you're finding it a bit fiddly. Definitely doing the second side of the zipper it is a little bit fiddly, but just persevere and it will be perfect. You can now pull your fabric through and you're gonna have like a little roly-poly um, tube of fabric. What you can also do is iron out the seam again and you can do a top stitch on the other side. It is a little bit fiddly to do the top stitch on the other side. You are just gonna have to maneuver it into your machine, but it's definitely worth it and it will give you that nice polished finish. So you will be happy to know the hardest part is done. We are now going to box off the corners and boxing off the corners will give you that nice boxy shape. We are also gonna pop in some pull tabs so that it's easy for you to open your pouch and you have something that you can hold onto and pull. You can make fabric pull tags, but I'm just using some faux leather material and I'm simply popping it in right where the zipper is. I found the center of my bag and I'm just popping them in. If you have any excess fabric on the edge, you can simply trim it off. You'll see me trim this off now in a second and that just gives me a nice even finish and there's no loose ends.
Before boxing off my edges, I just done two side stitches to close either side. I also just changed my zipper foot and put back on my normal foot, but you can actually still use your zipper foot. Um, it is a bit more fiddly, but you can just pop your old one back in. So two straight stitches and that is the sides closed. Don't forget to do a reverse stitch when you start and finish sewing. And now we are going to box off the corners. So you are going to do this four times because you have four corners. So you're going to find the point in the corner fabric. You're going to measure an inch. So for this one, I used an inch, but I am going to leave measurements in the description box for another size and you're going to use two inches. But I'm simply measuring an inch from the point and marking it with a marker. This is a special marker for sewing. It's water soluble. So once you put damp water, it will disappear. So I'm just drawing a line, popping a pin in because we are then going to sew that straight line and cut off the excess fabric. And I'm going to do this for all four corners, measuring in one inch, drawing a line and then sewing. Once you are finished sewing, you can cut off the excess fabric. I'm using a, I think it's called a pinking shears. I call it a picking shears. I think it's called pinking. Basically the wiggly scissors because this is gonna be a raw hem and you are gonna see it inside of the bag. You're not gonna notice it too much. So you can just neaten up any kind of loose threads and you can also just remove the marker as well and tidy up because we are finished our bag once we pull it through. So there's two sewing projects that I think might be useful for somebody. Please share this video if someone is looking for oil cloth pencil cases or sandwich bags and they can't get their hands on them. Um, I suppose it is nice to have things kind of wipeable and you know, hygienic and easy to clean. The sandwich bags, I just wash in warm soapy water. You can put them into the washing machine, but just be careful with whichever oil cloth you go for. Check the bottom, it'll give you the manufacturer's washing instructions. Um, I'd wash them on like a low kind of setting, but you can hand wash them in warm soapy water and just pop them out to dry and they're grand. You can also do the beeswax method. Um, I haven't made beeswax wraps, but that's on my list of things to do. I actually, ordered. I actually ordered some organic beeswax to have a shot at making the beeswax wraps um, to make food bowl covers. So. so that is me for this week. If you are heading back to school next week or if you're a teacher or um, a parent of a child going back to school, my heart is with you and I hope everything goes smoothly and you're all excited. Remember when you're a kid and you'd be so excited to get a new pencil case, new stationery, like your school bag and your uniform and I just hope that you actually get to go to school because in work I've seen so many people buying all of the stuff for back to school and I'm like all that money being spent I'm going back to school and if our numbers keep increasing I just don't know what's gonna happen so my heart is with you all and yeah good luck I'm thinking of you so that's me I'll see you in next week's video